RSA, the math. Ingenious, elegant, simple. But what about long-term vulnerability? In a previous session, we identified the uh, concept of how to achieve a situation where we perform encryption with one key and decryption with a different key in such a way that although we know that one can be derived from the other necessarily because they are related, the derivation is difficult. Difficult enough that we hope that our adversary uh, will need too much time to compromise our system. And the idea that we came about was based on modular arithmetic. We talked about substitution, so uh, basically uh, replacing the substitution of letter by letter by a much larger alphabet. So the plain text is a list of, uh, of bits. We can uh, cut them, chop them by t bits at a time, t, 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 and take every such block of t bits and see the particular selection of bits as one letter in an alphabet that has 2 to the power of t, which may be a very large number, depends on t, of possible letters in this alphabet. And basically the idea is we have all the 2 to the power of t uh, possible letters and we need the substitution formula to substitute this letter with this and this with that and this substitution table will be the encryption and the decryption will be the reverse substitution. So that's the idea. And we figured out that uh, if we use modular arithmetic we can have A which is a number that represents one of these possibilities, raise it to a number which is KE, the encryption key, and in a modular S, where S is a number that is bigger than 2 to the power of T, and get another number B, which will be one of the numbers here. Then we will need to find another number, K. D, which is the decryption key, to raise B to that power and get back A. And if K, E and K, D are different, it will work. We can also write it as A to the power of K, E, K, D equals A. So that was the basic idea. Now, what the uh, RSA, Rivest, Shamir and Edelman did, they took this basic idea and they found a particular mathematics based on something quite ancient by a mathematician called Euler, who uh, came up with a formula that, when you look at it, you see, hey, this Euler was very imaginative to come up with something so strange. And here is what he came up with. He said, if there is an A, and you raise it to the power of what he called Euler function of a number n, you get 1, mod n. Now, phi n is simply a count, a count of how many numbers smaller than n are co-prime with n. Don't divide n. That's it. So that's what phi n is. And this formula he has devised, he has proven, and this was laying in wait for centuries without any application until we have RSA coming, digging it out of the grave of pure math into very applicable math and now every day this uh, formula is doing service to humanity over the internet. Now, how does this help here? That's the idea. So, here is what the RSA team came up with. 
That's what we are looking for. We are looking for the proper math to get KE times KD equals back A. There is all mode of sum N. And we have the Euler formula. It looks very similar, but to make it more similar, we uh, may want to multiply this by A and this side by A, which is the same. So we get A to the power of V N plus 1 equals A. So now this looks the same as that. And it appears that all that we have to do is find KE and KD such that they will be phi n plus 1. But think about it. n is a, a single number. That means that there will be only one pair of KE and KD. And we want a variety. We want to have many possibilities of uh, encryption and decryption key so that we will confuse the adversary. And so the RSA uh, team said, yeah, we can do that. It's based on the idea that uh, uh, the mode of a number that's a result of a multiplication is the same as the multiplication of the individual modes of the multi uh, mul multiplying numbers. And so, in other words, we can, if we just erase this, and before we do that, we can say if this is 1, then we can write this equation again, a to the power of phi n, it also equals 1, and multiply it. So we get what? a to the power of 2 phi n, uh, equals 1 plus, times 1 is 1. But it doesn't have to be 2, it can be any number, so it can be a k. Some arbitrary uh, integer that we will write here, and this will be 1. And now, after we have done this, now we multiply each side by a, and then what do we get? Uh, we get the summary equation that says a to the power of k phi n plus 1 equals a. And now we are ready to have the equation that will say, in order to make this, which we know is true, help us find two numbers that will make this true, and that's what we want. That's the encryption key. That's the decryption key. What do we need to have? We need to have the equality, k times phi n plus 1 equals ke kd. Okay? And now, we need to find a way to proceed. It needed another innovation. Another bright idea for the RSA team. And here is what they came up with. If, if P and Q are two prime numbers, we can multiply them and get an N, which is a number that, when you break it down to its factors, it gives P and Q, and only P and Q. Okay. Now, uh, Euler sh showed to us that the, uh, the, his function, phi N, or phi of P times Q, equals... P minus 1 times Q minus 1. So, if we set N this way, what do we have? We have the number K times P minus 1 times Q minus 1 plus 1 equals KE KD. That is what we have. Now, what do we do with this? When you look at this, you say, hey, this, can be this equation here, which we just have written, can be written in modular language, which is what? It says that KE, KD equals one mode 
of P minus 1, Q minus 1. That, that, that is the same as this. So now all that we have to do is to find a KE, any number, that is uh, such that is co-prime with P minus 1 times Q minus 1, and then we are guaranteed to have another number, KD, such that multiplication will give 1. And if we have KE, to find KD, it's easy. We see in the math section, we have something called the extended Euclid algorithm that gives us step-by-step -step way. If we know P, we know Q, so we know this number, and we know KE to find KD. So any number here that is co-prime with this will qualify as KE. From KE, we can find KD, and then we have it. We have two numbers that are distinct, are different, are out of a large set, so it's difficult to guess what they are, and they accomplish what we want. A to the power of KE is a number B, which is a ciphertext, B to the power of, K, of KD is A, which is black back the plain text. Everything here is mode n. Now, why would it be difficult for adversary to do what we did? If we give KE out, they can use this and find the KD. Can they? They will only be able to find KD if they know P minus 1 times Q minus 1. But we don't release the numbers P and Q. In order to do this calculation, all that you will need is N. And N is P times Q. And it so happens that when the P and the Q are two primes that are large enough, then if you know N, it's believed to be difficult to identify P and Q. We don't know this for sure, but we believe it's difficult because every way that we have is slow enough that we feel if our adversary is not smarter than we are and also does it so slow, then this RSA scheme is secure. We have no proof, but we hope so. Again, in order to find KE from KD the way we did, you need to know the P and the Q in order to calculate P minus 1 times Q minus 1. But to, to calculate this from N, you need first to break N into P and Q. And if that is difficult, you cannot calculate this, that if you have KE, you don't have KD, or if you have KD, you don't have KE, case closed. Also remember that the KE and KD are completely symmetrical mathematically. So one can be for encryption, the other for decryption, or vice versa. But that's the entire math. That's the basis of the new revolution that came about with countless applications for cryptography. The actual math that implements the idea of distinct keys for encryption and decryption that it's hard to derive one from the other. We will see that there are other solutions next time.